What's up everybody, welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today, oh, today we're gonna talk about a tricky one. And that is the top three things that I wish I had known before getting into fountain pens. That is a tricky, tricky, tricky question to answer because there's a whole lot of things, like a lot. I could probably do like a full like hour long stream about what I wish I had known before I got into this hobby. But I think all of it boils down to about three uh, categories or three things, so to speak. Um, and the first one, probably the biggest one, is, oh, I wish I had known how much money I was going to spend. <laughs> uh, yeah. For me, uh, when I fell, I fell hard and fast uh, into this hobby. Like, Alice in Wonderland went down the rabbit hole fast. Um, some people, they're not gonna fall into that trap, so for some people, this point won't even matter to them, but for me, it was a big one. I've never ever once been in like financial trouble or anything like that, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm definitely okay, don't worry. Um, I mean, I just bought a condo for crying out loud, so I can't be doing that bad, but this hobby has definitely taken up a lot of money. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was one of the reasons why like Matt from the Pen Habit even left, and among others, like I know there was tons, but this hobby gets expensive fast. Not only do pens become super duper expensive, but I mean, the paper, the ink, the accessories, all of the things that come along with the hobby eventually all add up. Even just to start, you know, you've got to spend at least 50 bucks between the pen, ink, and paper. You can probably find it a little bit cheaper, but to get like pretty decent stuff is, is kind of costly. So that is definitely my number one thing that I wish I had known uh, when getting into it was cost for sure. The second thing is how much space, <laughs> how much physical space all of this would take up. It's something that I really have only thought about, <clears throat> excuse me, I like sneezed like 30 times before this video. It's something I really only thought about in the last year or so as I've tried to adopt a little bit more of like a minimalistic style um, to uh, my life. And that is been getting rid of a lot of things that I don't need, uh, you know, like clothes, old guitars, things like that, like that I just don't need in my life taking up physical space when they don't need to be there. Which is also the reason why you've heard me talk about like selling off pens recently. Um, a lot of you have been scared that like I'm leaving the hobby and I'm, I'm definitely not, like not even a little bit of my thinking about leaving this hobby. It's just I'm wanting to pare down all of my collections and not feel so overwhelmed by all of this stuff because <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, like I have dozens of ink samples. I have a million different types of paper. Um, you know, I have a whole bunch of cases. I've got a whole ton of ink bottles. Those take up a ton of room, um, especially since like, you know, I keep them in a drawer to keep them away from the light. I used to keep them out, but I don't really do that anymore. So like I have an entire drawer just dedicated to ink and I do not have a large ink collection compared to some people. So this stuff, all of the stuff <laughs> takes up so much space. Um, you know, I'm a journaler, um, so I'm on my ninth journal now since I've started um, doing that with fountain pens. And even that, like just old journals take up some space. Now I'll never ever throw those out um, just because I enjoy every once in a while going back and like, you know, seeing where I was a few years ago, like in, you know, mental headspace. Most of the time I just laugh at it, but in the moment, I needed it and it's just better for my mental health if I can journal. So, but like, I, you know, I usually have like two, three, four journals that are empty just waiting for me to use them. That takes up space, uh, you know, because journals are like, this is the smallest one that I have. 
and this is a soft shell one, but for the most part, I keep like hard bound ones that are like a little bit meatier. So they take up some space. Plus I have dot pads, notepads, actual spiral bound books, loose paper, like it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. And again, it's my own doing uh, because of, you know, the whole rabbit hole thing. It can be a lot more manageable. <laughs> But again, for me personally, that's one thing I would have liked to have known. And then third thing kind of coupled in with that is how much time and how much, uh, how quickly it would become ingrained into my life. And that is a very positive thing. Like I said, with journaling, I never did that before I uh, got into fountain pens. It has saved me so much. <laughs> like. I never, when I was a kid, I was never a journaler. I was never one of those like, dear diary, I have a crush on the kid next door, la la la. I was never one of those people. I thought writing was a waste of time, which is hilarious because I write stories all the time, but like writing about personal stuff, I always thought was a waste of time. Um, and I never really had anything to write about. So I was like, what's the point? I'm not like famous or something. Um, and I didn't realize how much I needed it until I got into fountain pens. So fountain pens really honestly saved my mental health <laughs> um, because I have been able to invest my time into something that really does save me. On the other <laughs> side of things is that sometimes, yeah, it does take up a lot of time. I find myself surfing the web a lot for like new things I've never seen or you know, the latest ink that comes out, the latest pens or something weird or whatever. I spend a good chunk of time looking at that kind of stuff and it's not all bad like clearly however you want to waste your time is you know my favorite saying and I don't know who said it but I heard this quote like when I was in like the ninth grade was like time you enjoy wasting is not wasted <laughs> I can argue that a little bit now that I'm older a little more wise um, and that is yeah I spend a lot of time looking at that kind of stuff and for the most part I enjoy it I spend a lot of time on Instagram, which is something that I never anticipated. Um, you know, posting photos and commenting on other people's photos and just like, you know, looking through the um, explore page at, at different things. And so it takes up a lot more time than I thought. Um, bless you guys for watching this, but YouTube takes up a lot of time as well. Um, and again, it's time I enjoy. So it's not like a labor, you know, I, I it's not like, I was like, oh God. I have to make a video today, I don't want to, but I have to. You know, it's not like a burden, <laughs> I enjoy doing it. Um, and if I don't want to, I just don't make a video, but it does take up a lot of time. Um, you know, I was watching a video that Brian Goulet posted uh, and I, I wish I remembered which one it was. I really do so that I could like, you know, tag it somewhere here, but he basically hit the nail on the head when he said that, the people in this community that put the hours into these videos do it because they love it. We don't do it to get paid. Sure, there's some ads on it, so it gives you a little bit of spare change, but that's it. It's just spare change. It's nothing you can live off of. It's nothing to even sustain the habit when you get further along into this hobby. It's just a teeny tiny itty bitty bit of a bonus. That's why a lot of people also lean towards like Patreon pages and things like that. It's not something that I've done. Um, to be honest, I have thought about it. And I'm torn both ways uh, about doing a Patreon page because I'm not sure if I should. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that because I could make a whole video about whether I should or shouldn't do a Patreon page, but that's neither here nor there. He, you know, Brian basically said like, we do it because we love it. Everyone that I know of that posts videos has a full-time job. This is just for fun. You know, so you think about the time that you spend filming. So for example, I've been filming for nine minutes and 59 seconds, um, and then you, continue filming and then you edit stuff and then you got to upload it and then you spend a lot of time going through comments and you know like just things like that so it does take up a lot of time 
And again, that's not a negative. A lot of that time is a positive use for it. Uh, you definitely get the trolls, that's for sure. Um, which sucks. Uh, but that said, it's, it's still a thing. It's still a thing to think about. So those are really the, the three things that I personally wish I knew before getting to this hobby. Is the expense, <laughs> because oh boy, the stuff that physically impacts your life and the amount of time that you give towards it. Um, the question that I often get when people ask me, um, you know, why I still do this despite those three things is that it's like anything that you do. The good outweighs the bad and that's why you do it. Sure, there's things about this that I don't like doing. I don't like cleaning my pens. <laughs> I don't like dealing with trolls. I don't like the fact that uh, I probably spend more money than I should on it. But I love everything else. I love it. I love the fact that it saved my life from journaling. I love the fact that I get to talk to 99% uh, great people. Um, I love the people I've met because of this hobby. Um, I love the environment that this is, you know, created. Um, I love the fact that I now have different avenues to express some creativity via writing, you know, random videos. If I want to, I can spend like a really long amount of time, like making a video super dope, or I can sit down and I can just talk to you guys like human beings. I love all that. <laughs> so the, the good outweighs the bad. And that's why I keep doing it. And I'm curious now, what are the three things that you wish you knew before you got into this hobby? Whether you started yesterday or 50, 60, 80 years ago. Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, I love you for watching these videos. I really do. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the subscribe if you wanna see more every Monday and Friday uh, with two, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, a Q&A comes out. Guys, as always, I'll see you next time. Bye. Of course, I have my sidekick here. Say hello, Parker. Yes. She goes, guys, guys, I'm hunting. I'm hunting rabbits. Yes. <laughs>